Superman Man of Tomorrow issue 8 sees Clark writing a story about how Superman died defending Metropolis. Clark finds this all wrong as Jimmy comes to see how he's doing. Clark tells him that it's a slow news day so Perry has him writing out obituaries for people who aren't actually dead, including Superman. Jimmy finds that horrifically morbid but knows it's part of the job. He asks who else Clark is writing for, learning he wrote similar obituaries for Guardian and Black Lightning, two of which Jimmy actually comes up with better obituaries with the heroes of falling in battle with their greatest villains. Perry comes looking for Jimmy, who slinks off as Mr. White checks in on the obits, but Clark says that he can't do this since all these heroes are alive. Perry tells him that the obits are for people who are near death's door, and really, superheroes are the closest it comes, especially since Superman's number has already come up once, and it might happen again. Perry says that it could be Parasite or Silver Banshee, or maybe even Luther finally gets the upper hand, but it will happen. Perry says that when Superman died, they sold millions of copies and made a lot of money, however it was the worst day of his life, and all Clark needs to do is leave out the cause of death and get it done. Clark gets to work, writing about how he died and knows writing about his death isn't hard, it's writing about his life that is, since Metropolis knows so little about it, only that he actually appeared one day in the busy city, scared at how loud everything was compared to Smallville. He knows Metropolis doesn't know how his life changed when he met Lois Lane and maybe once he really is gone, the city will learn that Clark Kent is Superman and Superman is Clark Kent. However, they will question if Clark was really a disguise for him to hide among them, and they really won't know that he's the same man in the costume as he is out of it. He knows the people might find him crazy for flying straight into any danger, but it's a choice that he made and he's not scared, fighting the fights like each is his last, and while he's seen the worst things in the universe, he's also seen the best of humanity and how it's worth protecting, whatever the cost, and the people themselves have to do their best with what they are given, something his parents taught him. Soon Clark hears about a fire at an apartment building downtown as Jimmy races off to get pictures. Clark heads out too, despite Perry yelling at him to finish the obits, but rushing upstairs and changing into his costume, Clark says the obituaries will have to wait, since his story is still being written. Later on, Clark is given a boring assignment to cover Alex Ewell's run for mayor, who until now, Ewell has used only tabloids like the son to spew his propaganda into the city, but now Ewo talks about how the city needs a common man and a leader who will protect them. Clark knows his deadline is due very soon, so Ewo starts pointing him out, telling his people not to believe in what they say in the Daily Planet, since they are mad the sun is beating them at the newsstands. The people boo Clark, who says he's only doing his job as Ewo meets with one of his advisors, whom Clark finds familiar. He overhears them saying that they are ready for even Superman, so Clark follows follows them, calling Perry to tell him he's chasing down a lead, but the chief knows that it's only 52 minutes until deadline, so he better hurry up. Using his x-ray vision, Clark notes that for some reason, Ewell's advisors are carrying guns. Taking off, Clark heads to the Hall of Justice, where he begins running searches on the man he saw, tracking Ewell's money holdings and learning that one of the buyers of some land he sold had ties to the Markovian royal family. He tracks the man he saw, revealed to be a bomber, tracking him to the train station station and soon he follows him there, where he sees two of the men exchange bags, a bag that is ticking. Suddenly the man corners Clark, with one of his thugs pointing a gun at the reporter's back. Knowing he can't risk them shooting anyone, Clark headbutts the man behind him, knocking him out cold before quickly using his heat vision to take the other's gun out of the equation, knocking him out with one punch before changing. Racing out of the station, he soon finds the man with the bag, ripping him from the train cart. Superman says that it was smart of them to use two bags with one ticking loudly enough that he could hear, since the ticking one was the decoy and the silent bag was the real bomb. He throws the bag into the air as it explodes and delivers the man to the police, learning from the criminal that it was only a job and he was meant to make it look like a terror attack that Ewo could use as a scare tactic to get people to vote for him since he's working with Markovia. Superman tells him to tell the police everything as he races back to the Daily Planet, 10 minutes ahead of schedule. He taps away at his keyboard frantically as Ewo delivers a statement denying everything. Clark knows he's going to miss the deadline, but Perry comes by, telling him that this is a big story and they need to get it right, so the presses are being held so Clark can take his time with it. Perry, however, knows what the front page headline will be as Clark knows that this boring assignment turned out a little differently than he thought. Superman Man of Tomorrow issue 8 was yet another fantastic collection of Superman stories that, much like Venditti's little run at the beginning, focused on the reporting side of things and even got into more of the other duties Clark 
Clark pulls as a reporter, like writing obituaries. The obituary story was fantastic and felt like a story that was there to kind of reaffirm what Superman's mission statement is and how he is as a person, kind of taking that age old saying, that never ending battle slogan that he has, and making it a damn good short story. Both of these stories were written really well by the crime reporter turned writer Van Jensen, as well as some fantastic art by Nick Robles and Andy Tong. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. 